So Fred posted a response to my response to Piro about um, metanoia, and uh, Fred linked a paper by Charles Lawlin called At Play in the Fields of the Lord, the Role of Metanoia in the Development of Consciousness. Um, and in this, uh, this essay, Lawlin goes on to give a theory of play, of playfulness. For him, um, playfulness is the ability that higher animals, uh, mammals, and specifically um, dolphins, chimpanzees, human beings, and some birds, it seems, um, who are capable not only of uh, passively accommodating ourselves to the givens of our experience and perception of the environment, but through play we are able to assimilate uh, deeper, um, more finely tuned understandings of um, the world in which we live. We do so by interacting with it, by behaving in a playful way in regards to it. Um, and Lawlin criticizes some behaviorist uh, attempts to explain playfulness um, and instead wants to direct our attention to our very experience of attention. Um, he wants to try to explore or describe or investigate not the nature of um, scientific objects like uh, the physical body, but instead he wants to investigate uh, what it is to be a body, to be somebody, to be a who, uh, not simply a what. And so Lawlin wants to understand what it is about our own conscious participation in the ongoing world process uh, that allows us to gain um, a more assimilated and unified understanding of it as a whole. Because it seems that in the human being, through this process of thinking, a certain scientific knowledge is being uh, grown through experimentation in nature. And nature includes our own bodies and our own psyches, our own nervous systems and, uh, and immune systems. We are medically experimenting on our own physiology, our own genealogy, and um, certainly experimenting with uh, the genomes of plants. And in fact, I read an article the other day about uh, a speech that Freeman Dyson gave at uh, an EDGE conference where he was talking about the future age of wonder when geneticists and molecular biologists will be able to write um, biological poems out of the genes that they use to create entirely new species of organism. Fruits, flowers, birds, designed from scratch. By molecular poets. It's a chilling vision. I mean, I can um, really, honestly, if, if I'm honest, detect a, a, a sense of. Um, um, it's like a beautiful, amazing possibility. We can actually do this. And see, it. That's the question that's so astonishing to me, not how we are to morally respond to it. I mean, that, I don't know what to say about it. I'm, I'm kind of at a loss. I mean, I'm uncomfortable about the idea, I have to say, but putting that aside to the extent that I can, I still have to deal with the fact that this is possible, that human beings can make new life from scratch. What does that mean about the, the nature of the human being? What does that mean about consciousness and its role in um, the ongoing evolution of the universe? The so-called external world.
because you know when we talk about the external world, uh, we forget that the world also has an inside um, in us. Our thoughts are that empty space in which the world comes to know itself and comes to change itself, transform itself from the inside out. In other words, it's not determined by an other. It's self-determined. It's a necessarily free act. Uh, and, you know, you've got to be able to play with contradiction there in a sort of Hegelian way by overcoming uh, the apparent dichotomy to see the essential unity, or at least polar unity, of these uh, apparently contradictory concepts, self and other. And, you know, I think it's really fascinating the way that Lalin plays with this idea that we cannot know the uh, operational environment, I think he calls it. We can only know our cognitive environment, the environment that our nervous system uh, has evolved in order to allow us to experience. But in defining the situation in that way, Lalin has enacted a knowledge of what he said was transcendent to our organism. In describing reality itself, the thing in itself, uh, as outside of experience, he has made it into an experience. It's become an object of discourse with which we can uh, understand uh, a meaningful uh, reality. And so nothing has become somehow uh, real. Possibility has begun, has begun to play an active role in the ongoing becoming of the universe, the ongoing unfolding of the natural process of growth, which is the biosphere and, in fact, the whole uh, physio, bio, psycho, spiritual organism that is the Gaian system as a whole. Um, the earth itself thinks in the human being. The human being is an animal embedded in an ecosystem. A lithosphere, which is itself a self-healing wound. It's a living process uh, that is, you know, if we define life as, as self-organization and self-production, then certainly that's what the very mineral core of the earth is doing, and which the, the biospheric uh, surface of the earth is doing in a heightened, more intense form and which uh, the human uh, organism in particular is doing in an even more intense form. And so this, this process of uh, evolution of the earth has not been a tendency toward increasing materialization, but toward increasing spiritualization. The presence of consciousness in the universe is an assimilative activity and not merely accommodative uh, and adaptive. And so I think as soon as we recognize that, um, it, it changes uh, not only our epistemic position in other words, it not only changes uh, the relationship which we think true knowledge has to scientific uh, investigation, but uh, it also changes the relationship we assume exists between consciousness and matter, between uh, physics and our own experience. Once we have had that sort of a metanoia, of that sort of a playful gesture towards the nature of our own existence, playful at least in relation to what our standard um, 
monophasic, I think uh, Obama would call it, culture at the moment. Um, if we open our minds through an assimilative activity of our own consciousness, our own intentionality, our ability to change our relation to objects of sensory experience or of inward, intuitive, and imaginative experience, um, if we come to recognize our own consciousness, then our orientation entirely changes. Um, we evolve. Evolution is an, a mutational process, and metanoia is precisely uh, a willingness to mutate, to learn by playing, not knowing where you will end up when you begin, um, but in trusting your relation, your essential unity with whatever is out there. You come to know it in a more intimate way, and so uh, thrive yourself. Organism and environment, uh, they seem to take place as a process of consciousness coming to greater self-realization. So never was the organism or the subject or the environment or the object part. The universe itself is an organism environment, uh, an otherizing self, differentiating and reuniting and undulating in that way. Never quite sure which it is, nothing or something. You know, I think, and all of a sudden, possibility emerges out of actuality, definiteness. But then after thinking in the next moment, that thought has a definite uh, effect on the world. It changes it. And I'm forced to think again. And to, in fact, continue thinking, processing, never simply beginning with a sensory experience, which I have to interpret, but always already having interpreted the last moment. Me constantly recalling it through memory, um, which is somehow allowing my current thinking activity to increase its, um, its assimilation of the world around it. So, you know, if science is, is anything, we don't simply interpret the empirical findings of the last four or five hundred years in terms of um, a materialistic metaphysics or cosmology, but instead we, we look at science as the universe itself coming to a deeper understanding of its own processes as human thought through human uh, thinking. And consciousness is just as world constituting as whatever matter might be. And it's unclear uh, what we might mean by matter, just as it's unclear what we, we might mean of by consciousness as something which takes place um, independently of matter. Consciousness always has an object, but it's not determined by its object. So, um, I guess uh, I'll leave it at that, and I'll also link you guys to um, the paper that Fred provided. It's a really great paper. Uh, a play in the fields of the ward, the role of metanoia in the development of consciousness. So uh, download it and give it a read. It's not that long, actually. Really fascinating.